Good morning. Sorry, I was a couple minutes late trying to get the kids around and get them ready. How are you doing this morning? Hey, baby. Oh, of course, he wants up. <laughs> uh, how is my sound? I think it's okay on my end. Sit up. Oh, Bubba, you don't need up. Okay. Hello. Oh, Charlie. Come here. You want to up? Are you my? Are you my YouTube star? Come here. So I've come up with a few questions that I've had followers ask me. Good morning. And how are you doing? Did you miss me this week? Uh, but I've come up with a few different questions. And then if y'all ask questions as we go, I'll answer those. Uh, I wasn't sure what to really do for my live stream this morning. But... I've had quite a few people message me with different questions about rabbits, so I thought I would just do a Q&A, a short live stream today. I've got um, to go somewhere in around 11, so I can't stay on for super long. But I'll let a few more people come in, and then I will start my Q&A. Does anybody... Um, have a question they want me to answer. Otherwise, um, I've got about 10 or so that I've come up with that people have asked me throughout the last few months. Let's see if I can get this. Uh, there we go. That's a little bit better. I know I've had a couple people um, say they can come in my live stream, but they can't comment, so I don't know what is going on uh, with YouTube on that. Hey, Lady B, how are you doing? So you're going to be listening while doing dishes and washing canning jars. That is exciting. What are you going to be canning? You get um, a good harvest of something, and you're going to put it up. The only canning I've done is um, jelly. We did that blackberry jelly. Uh, I did a few pickles, but they were, it wasn't really canning. It was just kind of getting them ready. Hey, single man. Hey, Eli. Good morning. How are you doing? Um, again, I was just letting a few people come in, and then I've got a few questions that people have asked me. And then if y'all have any questions about rabbits or just anything in general, you can ask. But... So I've just got a, a few different questions, um, and I thought I would do them. That way people can hear it. So, yes, you can hear me have the sound up. I'm meeting a friend today. She's bringing me some cucumbers. Oh, yummy. Yeah, that's what I did. I made some pickles, but I did sweet and sour pickles. Um, and I didn't. I had enough for about three jars, and we ate them, so there wasn't much putting back. But we did, I did can now, so. Hey, PJ, how are you doing? Good morning. I hope you have a good day in Waterloo this morning. I hope your rabbits do really good. Um, good luck on that. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks at State Fair. Hopefully we can um, chit-chat. I'll be there Friday through Sunday, so I know you probably won't be there until probably Saturday night or Sunday, but that'll be fun. Hey, um, TNS Dogs and Dragonflies Farm, good morning. How are you? Um, you were just on the Bingeathon this last week recently because I remember watching some of your stuff. So nice to have some new people in here. Oh, yeah, cold. Uh oh. Maybe you should run to Walmart and get you a jacket. I saw you had your little blanket um, on you. I always keep a jacket and like a hoodie or something in my car in the trunk because I get cold really easily and so I always have like an extra just in case um, 
<laughs> we did that once we went to a cave and we didn't even think about it being cold in the cave. So thankfully I had a jacket, but the kids didn't have anything. So we had to go to the, the shop and spend a lot of money and get like a little jacket for them to go down in the cave. So now I try to always carry extra clothes in the trunk for all seasons. So, but anyway, since we've got a few people in here, I'll go ahead and answer a couple questions. I had someone send me a Facebook message and they asked me, uh, what do you do if a doe doesn't take care of their babies? And I was like, that is kind of open-ended because there's a lot of, um, you know, I'm not, a, I wasn't hundred percent sure what they were wanting. So I talked to them a little bit. And they said their, their doe had the babies in the nest box, but they didn't pull any fur. And so they were asking, all right, bye, VJ, um, what they should do. Um, luckily, it was warm and the babies didn't get chilled, but he was worried about them. And so I told him, you know, if you think of your doe, you can get a hold of her. If she's friendly enough, you can just hold her and then pull some of that fur out of, like, her stomach area and just pull the fur to cover up the babies uh -huh. and hopefully within 24 hours of her having them she'll have that natural instinct to pull some more fur um, you can also keep fur back so if it's really warm um, which that was the doe's first time having baby so you couldn't have done this but I said if a doe has a lot pulls a lot of fur and they don't need that much you can always save some of that doe's fur back and put it in a bag you can just save it that way if for some reason she doesn't pull fur in the future you have um, some of her fur um, you can also try to use other fur from another rabbit if you had one that pulled and they're like living next to each other kind of used to each other's smell um, i've heard of people do dryer lint and things like that, dog fur. I'm not sure if I would do either one of those options. I would probably just kind of get the rabbit out and pull some of its own fur. And then hopefully, when she, normally within 24 hours, they'll pull fur, 24 or 48 hours. So I would just pull enough to cover them up. Since it's hot, it's not that big of a deal. You don't have to pull a whole bunch. Um, if it was winter time, I would pull a little bit and then I would maybe shell the kids, bring them inside until she decided to pull some more and then gather it up around her cage. I actually had a first time go do that, which it was hot because it's summer or fall or whatever. And she didn't pull any. When I got home, it was hot enough. Her babies were fine. They were in the, the shavings and the, the uh, hay. And so I just got her out, pulled a little bit of fur, put it on top of her, on top of them. And then by that evening, like the next morning when I woke up, she pulled a ton of fur, but it was all over her cage. She didn't actually put it in the right spot. So I just gathered it up and put it there on top of her babies. And hopefully next time she'll know what to do. She was a first time mom. Uh, if it's winter time and they don't pull fur, I would definitely pull some and then bring those babies inside until she decides to pull more. Uh, that way they don't get chilled and you don't lose the litter. But probably if she doesn't pull it, then they may already be gone before you catch it unless you're just right there watching. But that was one of um, the questions that someone had Facebook messaged me. What do you do if take care? But, yeah. but also, there can be other reasons. Um, other reasons take care. You want to go, Baba? Yeah. You want to go in the living room? Yeah, Baba.
If you want to draw something, go get your own. young or they may just not know what to do <coughs> excuse me um so the best thing to do if a mama doesn't have them in the nest box and she loses the litter is rebreed her within the next 48 hours so i would rebreed her immediately that um that right then or if it was in the morning i had to go to work i would do it as soon as i got home from work and what that does is it prevents the mom's milk from building up and her getting mastitis. And if you rebreed her, the milk will dry up and then she'll have, she won't have any difficulties with that. And then you'll have babies right away. And normally the second and any litters after that, she does a really, she'll do a good job. She just had to kind of figure it out the first time. And that's another reason sometimes breeders will wait until the, the does are eight or nine months old before they breed them. They just seem to be a little more mature and more able to have the babies. I have luckily not had that issue. I've read does at, you know, six and seven months old, and they seem to know what to do. Um, the doe I bred that didn't know what to do this last time was eight months old when I bred her. She was a senior. Um, so I think it just has to do with the doe. But a lot of times the first litter is a wash. Um, it's no good, and you just have to kind of, rebreed and hopefully she'll do good now a lot of people do a three strike rule and what that means is uh, three strikes and you're out and it's on that table right there um and so like the, if she the first litter if she has them and she doesn't have them in the nest box and you lose them that's the first strike if she does it again I don't know. There's one in Daddy's room, maybe. Or in your room. Just go look for it. Um, so the first strike is like if they don't have it the first time. But if they go to the second time and they do the same thing, that would be the second strike. And then if you breed them a third time and they do it again, that would be the third strike. And a lot of people will get rid of that dough just because... Um, at this point now, you've invested three months, uh, food in three months. Um, Carly, what did I talk to you about? Go in there. You just find one. If you can't find one, then I'm sorry, but I'm busy. Thank you, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Um, but, yeah, so... Third strike, they mess up, then they're gone. Um, but I also do strikes. It doesn't necessarily mean that the doe lost her litter or the buck. Lost, like, if he didn't breed, maybe he, he bred a, a doe and she didn't take. Now, I don't necessarily consider that just the doe's fault. It could also be the buck's fault. So I do a three strike um, rule, but it also includes other things. So it looks like Eli does a two strikes um and then he asked, do I ever intense breed? So intense breeds, are you saying breed like as soon as they have babies or whenever the babies are, there's different variations of intense breeding. Um, the, the earliest I have ever bred is when a doe had babies and those babies were a month old. And um, I rebred her because I was trying to breed her for a specific date for state fair. And so I would consider that pretty intense. 
Um, and that doe actually did not take care of her second litter. So like her babies stayed on her until it, she, they were six weeks. Then I removed her babies. And so she had two weeks of like alone time. And then she had new babies. She had, I think, 18 babies that time. And she didn't use the nest box and she just didn't have any desire to take care of them. And so I didn't have very good luck with that. I, I don't know. Normally I don't rebreed the does until the babies are between eight and 10 weeks old. And that's just because of my cage space. I only have 16 cages. And so I breed based on how much cage space I have. Um, so yeah, I normally wean the babies between six and eight weeks old. Um, but yeah, I've done that one time where I bred her when she still had babies on her and it didn't go so well. So I wasn't, I don't know. Um, I don't really have the space to do intense breeding. I don't have enough cages. If I did that with all of my does, I would run out of room. And I don't like to butcher mine right at eight weeks. I normally wait till they're 10 or 12 weeks. That way I can evaluate them a little bit better for show because um, they really don't develop and it's hard to determine who's going to be really a good, you know, show rabbit that early on. And at least I haven't been able to do that. So I don't intend to breed. Um, I think the, the earliest besides that one time I was breeding just for state fair was maybe at eight weeks old. I don't know. Most of the time I wait and give them a little break. And I breed mainly for show. So I will, like, I didn't breed it all the summer hardly. Um, I had my last litter in June. And then I just had some more babies in August. So I gave them a, a little bit of time off. Um, but yeah, if I had more cages, I may could do that. But I just don't have the cage base. And. I don't know. My husband would probably kill me if I had that many rabbits that he had to process at one time. <coughs> so I don't, I don't intense breed. Um, yeah. The only time I think I would ever do that again would be if I had a specific show, like for a meat pen or something, I may try that again, but I've been pretty good at like doing my calendar here um and like figuring out when i need to breed so that the rabbits are a certain age for show i did breed some for this fall for me pim and i didn't have any of my kids show them and i tried to sell some but i don't know a lot of people are very competitive and they really have to kind of race their own because of how the laws are uh, you can't, Bubba, you're shaking the table. You have to have, uh, like, own the rabbits a month before the show. And then the me. rabbits can only be 10 weeks old, I think. And so you would have to own them at six weeks. And the problem with that is in Arkansas, you can't sell rabbits before eight weeks. So, and they have to, like, get their tattoo um in their ear at six weeks so you would have to sell them illegally and so i don't know how that would work that's why i was just going to do it for my kids at school that way i still technically was the owner and i was just donating them the meat pens to the kids and therefore there wasn't any sell cells and then i couldn't get in trouble hey, for look, that baby i girl. made a white doing it fast so you strictly for show yeah, I knew that. You did Dutch in California. So, I mean, if I did strictly for me, then I might breed more. Because I'd probably butcher them earlier. Um, you know, because right, especially for flyers, you know, right there at 8 to 10 weeks is the perfect age. And so if you bred them at 6 weeks, then by the time you butchered them, the new mom would have uh, babies. And so you could really use the same pin. Carly, you're shaking my table all over the place. Uh, so you could do that. 
but I don't put your all of them at eight to ten weeks. Yeah. Because I want to grow some of them out, and so sometimes I'll this leave the does does. Like I'll leave the does with their mom and grow them out on that pen, just because I don't have enough uh, cages. And then I'll remove the bucks and put the bucks in a their own pen. Um, but yeah, like the last couple litters I had, the only ones I we culled early were the ones that weren't show quality. So if we looked at them just based on their color, they got put in a pen. And so all the different ones from all the different litters were put into a cull pen or a grow out pen. <coughs> and then all the bucks were put in a bigger grow out pen. And I left the does with their moms. And that allowed me to keep more more of the rabbits for the fall for the show team so that Carly can show some. Because I think this coming up in um, a couple weeks, we have Arkansas State Fair. And Carly is going to have, we're going to have one, two, three, I think eight red rabbits between three different does that Carly is going to be able to show and some of my kids are going to be able to show. And so for me to be able to keep eight, especially since four of them are bucks, I had to um, lead, like not breed. That way I had the cage space to do that. So. Hey, out all it's like that. Time. I got that it's cold. It's like the fall changing weather, even though it's still 90 degrees. I've got some crud going on. All right, let's see what else I've got. Um... <clears throat> Okay, another question that someone asked me was, how do you get that stubborn doe Mommy. to breathe? Go get a napkin. Uh, uh, Go to the bathroom and get a tissue. I can't. Carly just sneezed and has. Mommy, get a <laughs> There's a tissue right there on the. Carly, grab the, the towel right there. <laughs> On the stove and wipe her face. There you go. She had a big old. She has the crud too. Um, but anyways, how do you get the, that doe to breed? Um, especially if she's stubborn. And luckily, I have a, a doe that is very hard to breed. And I've tried various methods. Sometimes I do came, that. Sometimes I don't. And I came to the conclusion that if you have a doe that doesn't want to breed. You just gotta have to wait till she's ready. Um, I've tried different little tricks and things to get her to breed. Um, sorry, my kids keep hitting the table. But um, nothing really seems to work until she's ready because, I don't know, she's just really stubborn and I've thought about getting rid of her because like right now I'm trying to get her to breed. So some various things that I've tried and none of them work more than once. So I think it's just, has to do with the doe, um, but you always take the doe to the buck's cage, and then if she doesn't want to lift or she doesn't want to breed, you can always try to switch their cages, so you can try putting the buck in the doe's cage and the doe in the buck's cage, and maybe she'll get used to his scent. Um, my go-to thing before I try that is to use apple cider vinegar, and I'll put that into her water, and hopefully that will help her um, get in the, in the mood. You can also give them treats. Um, some people say black wool sunflower seeds are supposed to help. <coughs> I give that to mine anyways. Um, so I don't see that helping. Um, another thing that I've done in morning peep is like I'll have a travel carrier. And I'll put the dough and the bucket and the travel carrier next to each other for a few hours and then try again to get them to breed. <coughs> Sorry. I've got, like, congestion. Um, Plus, like, I me. have taken them to a Plus, show. Like, and so, like, after I came back from the show, I, I tried to breed. And they that seemed to help. So some people swear by I take them on a car ride. Hey, plane speaker, how are you doing? Um... And so, I don't know, like, put them in a travel carrier, drive them around the block. Something about them, like, getting, I don't know if that works or not. Um, uh -oh. um, I've tried to just 
maybe try a different buck. So if you have more than one buck, if the first one doesn't seem to want to breed, then try a second buck. Maybe she will breed. Hey, baby, just give him one. Just give him one. No, he wants it sitting. Mommy, he wants it sitting in my chair. <coughs> Uh, hey, Reefly. So, how are y'all doing? Um, but yeah, there's just different. Those are some different suggestions. Um, the best suggestion I can say, if you have a doe that just no, no, no. really, really, really doesn't like breeding. Um, Mom, I can't even draw my kitchen. You can get a new doe. That's probably my best suggestion. Um, I don't even take my own advice because I like the doe I have. Um, she's the only root that I have, the only white eye. Yeah. Um, hey, how are you doing? Hey, Barefoot Adventures, how are you doing? Um, so I would say try to get a bred one so you keep a daughter. <coughs> and part of it too, give them a different color. Carlin, because this one doesn't work. It does um, work, see? Give him a different color, please. Because I asked you. Um, so, I would say get a daughter and keep the daughter. Because I did that with my white, uh, uh, white, white doe. And her daughter is a great breeder. So, I'm just thinking maybe the white one is old. And maybe she's just tired. of You know, she's had quite a few litters for me. Uh, so, that could be the problem. It's time for her to be retired. Uh, if they're not wanting to breed, uh, just keep a daughter and do that. Uh, but if it's a young doe and she doesn't want to breed, it's probably just because she's inexperienced and she doesn't know what she's supposed to do. So I would just try to continue um, trying to breed her and maybe she'll figure it out. If not, you know, make her a pet and sell her to somebody else that maybe. Because I've had that actually happen. One of my friends couldn't get a doe to breed. She tried everything. Uh, she gave her to me, and I put her in there with my buck, and she bred right away. So I don't know if it was just the change in the or the car ride. I don't know. But I think there's just different things you can try. Carly, let him use that one, please. Oh, I see one that he might like. I see another green. Sorry, I got the kids over here. Just give me the green one. One. Where's that green? I have a green crayon. Thank you. I'm going to use that. Or you can use the after bubble. Um, but yeah, I would just do that. Um, get a new dough. Uh, let me see what my other question. Does anybody else have any questions? I know I've had quite a few new people come in. Uh, Blade Speaker, Pete's came in, Reaper you so, Airfoot Adventures. Um, y'all have any questions about rabbits? Uh, any of y'all raise rabbits? Or thinking about getting rabbits or anything like that? Oh, Father, I got <coughs> I like really play on. You really make it my um, so another one someone asked me is where do you get rabbits at? That's a, a very common Where do you get rabbits? Where do I get my rabbits at? And where do they suggest I get rabbits? sounds kind of weird but it's just like any other livestock you're gonna buy if you buy good livestock and good um, quality livestock you're gonna be better off if you buy cheap then it's probably gonna cost you more money in the long run either through sickness or through feed if they're not growing out um, like you want them to that's the thing with rabbits <coughs> Ouch. Um, if you're raising them for meat you want them to grow fast, and you want to not have to feed them as much. 
That way you can butcher them at a young age. And if they're growing slow and you have to put more feed into them, one litter could pay for itself. Especially if you're selling any of them. Um, you know, my first stock that I bought for my reds were, uh, it was $100 for the pair. And, you know, we kept some as breeders and then we sold some. And I could sell them easily between $50 and $60. And so the first litter paid for the parents. And then since then, you know, I bought more. But normally once you breed them, you know, if you can sell one or two, you've paid for the parent. And then if you can sell a couple more, you've paid for the feed. And so I always try to sell at least two to three out of each litter. And that'll pay for your feed. Um, and then anything past that. Uh, we keep for show. After show season's over, then we can sell the ones that um, we don't need. Say we have extra bucks. And if you raise them out long, you know, longer, he wants to play. then they're worth more. And so you can sell them between um, $75 and $100 what? at six to eight months for their age. So you're getting $60 at you know, eight weeks old. And then you grow see. them out for six months, you get over $100. Uh, you don't really put that much feed into them. They eat about a cup of feed a day. Um, and if you supplement with hay and things like that, you can also lower your feed cost. Here, Mama. Here's a baby. That is... Oh, oh, and it's a way to help your income, too. If you are just trying to raise them just for you to eat, then even if you buy the more expensive stock, if you look at just your feed cost for one litter, it'll pay for itself. So, like, our feed is about $18 a bag. Um, when we were growing some of our not-as-good ones out, uh, they were taking, you know, almost four months to grow out to butcher. That was two extra months of feeding. And so they go through a bag of feed. Like, we probably go through a bag of feed two bags a week. So if you have to do that for two extra months, you know, you got quite a bit extra feed cost and so that'll pay for your for your rabbits um, also if you buy the better quality just to eat a lot of times the better quality is going to grow better and be healthier um, things like that so I would suggest don't go with a cheap $10 rabbit unless you're just getting it for a pet um, try to find a replicable breeder and maybe even one that it does for show see if you can buy a, a color maybe like red like we have some that depends on the color isn't show quality it doesn't want that color. Okay. Um, and so i sell those to people i just want for me where is the lid to this i don't know it's right over there get it um not yellow so we've got you know rabbits that are born that we can't show but they're good quality good genetics I can sell those. Um, so you can always find a good quality rabbit. That just may not be the right color uh, from a reputable breeder. And there you go, you got a good meat rabbit. But if you do buy the ones that are show quality or showable, then you can always sell that to 4 H kids or FFA kids so you can make a little extra money doing that. <coughs> uh, so that brings me to my next question. Which a lot of people ask me, what is the difference between show quality, purebred, pedigreed, and registered? So that is a, a lot of questions all kind of up in one. And so I'll try to go through that as simple as I can. What is Mary? You want the marker? So, what is show quality? So, show quality could technically be any rabbit that is, that meets the standard of perfection for, for that breed. So, any rabbit, it doesn't have to be paper, it doesn't have to, it could be bought at a flea market for 10 bucks. Any rabbit can be show quality because you can put any rabbit on the show table. And as long 
because it doesn't get it into, doesn't it doesn't have a, a disqualification. It can be it shown. Doesn't talk. <coughs> so pretty much any rabbit can be considered show quality. This Does that mean you're going to win at a show? Probably not. Uh, so, you know, that's it. So, years ago, I raised Rex, loved them, always had to keep track of what colors they would throw for show. Yeah. Uh, paid quite a bit, yeah, to start. Yeah, and you have to pay attention to the colors because a lot of people want, like, a pure line, too. They don't want to get a surprise. They want to know what, what that rabbit's going to show. And with Rex, it's really hard because they have, um, I don't know how many varieties, like 30 or something. It's crazy. So, <laughs> no, Mama. Okay, Carlin, stop. He draw it out of my. Okay, mind. it's fine. Um, so the circle is just anything. Pedigree. What a pedigree rabbit is. That means that for three generations. So it's parents, grandparents, and great grandparents. Give me the lead. Quit. Um, all three generations are the lead. same breed. So, like, I do. I have New Zealand. Then, so for it to be pedigree, you'd have to have three generations of records for that rabbit. For the parents, grandparents, and great grand Do you great want grandparents. This one? Yeah. It's Mary's. I have smell to it, have Baba. Uh, smell it, smell it, smell it. Oh you have to Carly. Yeah. He doesn't want to smell it. Okay. Uh, you have to have the the weight of the the parents at their uh, adult weight. You have to have it your number. So a lot of times there's a name, so the rabbitry name and then the rabbit's name. You have to have it your number, and you have to have the color or the variety of the rabbit and the rabbit breed and a weight. So those are the main things that you have to have. Now some people will add other extra things to the pedigree, like the date of birth, um, any winnings, any legs that they have won, things like that. So the minimal thing you have to have for it to be a Oh, that is like a zombie. Carly. It's three generations. It has to have an ear number, a weight, and then the variety or the color for that rabbit. Uh, and so once it's pedigreed, then you can also get it registered. <laughs> so to get a rabbit registered, you have that a rabbit has to be. Uh, adult age, so it has to be at least six it's months old, same. minimum of six months old, has to meet senior weight, so for New Zealand's, that would be uh, nine pounds for a buck and ten pounds for a doe, so a lot of times they're going to be closer to eight months to get registered. You have to take them to a licensed registrar, she evaluates the rabbit, and then if she deems it, like, proper to the standard of perfection. There's no um, DQs or anything like that. Um, she's, she's, uh, you've probably been showing it up to this point, but as long as it, it can go on the show table and doesn't have any um, DQs, then it can be registered. She'll sign off on it. You'll send the paperwork in and go see. And then um, she will clamp it in the left ear with the, the registrar's mark. So she'll tattoo in its left ear, or its right ear. Yeah. Uh, so then that is a registered rabbit. So just because you have two registered rabbits doesn't mean that the litter, every rabbit in that litter will be registered. They have to make it to adult weight, and they have to be DQ free. <coughs> and the individual that's licensed has to approve it. And then they sign on. I see it. She got a spell for it. I see that. It's very pretty. And then it's a, a um, so like a grand champion, that would be any rabbit that's gone to a show. They draw me something. Don't so look. I can check it. Oh, say hello to Shane. I broke your boyfriend. No. <laughs> that's my cousin. He's in Florida. He is not my mom's. Boyfriend. That's my cousin. He's in for. Um, he is not your cousin, Mama. He is not your cousin. Uh -huh. What? Yep. He's my cousin. Anyways, who is it that? Sounds like people are coming in. I bet that's Linda or Dad. 
Oh, no, nope, it's Papa Randy. So we've got people coming in our house. We've got um, a funeral this evening. And say hi, Papa Randy. That's why I said earlier I wasn't gonna be able to stay on long. So I've got company coming over. Gotta go over and get ready for Papa's funeral this evening. I think they're gonna practice some songs and get ready for that. But anyways, you may want to walk around. I don't know if you can jump to the baby gate. Are you looking for something? I think there is. Hey, Goss Mania, how are you doing? Sorry, I just had a whole bunch of company come in. I apologize, but now I've got a babysitter for Charlie, so not for Carly though. She's still over here drawing. Uh, but yeah, so Grand Champion back on that. Sorry, got distracted. Um, they have to go to a show, and they have to win uh, based on their breed. So as long as they have five other rabbits and three other competitors and they win for their variety or even for their breed, they can win a leg. And, you know, once they'll, you'll get documentation. So once they win three times, then that rabbit can then be a grand champion. And then if it's registered, it's a registered grand champion. So it could be a grand champion without being registered, but nine times out of ten, if it's registered, it's going to be also um, a bit. They may get granted before it gets registered because they can win before they hit uh, senior weight. So, you know, that's part of it. So. Yep. Yeah, Lady B is canning some stuff, so she's getting ready to can some pickles. And then starting small with Kelsey says she got here late. But she saw I was live, so that's awesome. Yeah, I've been just answering some different questions. I've had some kid drawing and craziness. Have some company over here. So. <coughs> it's been an interesting live stream. But anyways, I just wrote up a couple of questions. Does anybody else have a question about rabbits? Um, hopefully that explains... The difference between show quality and pedigree because there is a big difference. Oh, you know. Um, well, like I said, if you're going to buy rabbits, you definitely want to see them and get your hands on them before you purchase them. Or you need to uh, know someone that is a good breeder. And you learn that by just getting to know people in the rabbit community. And you know, now I, when I first started, I didn't really know what to do. And so it's, that's kind of why I started YouTube is to help people out. Uh, but yeah. Oh, I didn't talk about that. So what is the best breed for a pet? So what I would suggest is um, if you're wanting a pet, like are you wanting it in your house or are you going to keep it outside? Um, a lot of times people choose the smaller um, miniature breeds for pets just because they don't take as much cage space. Um, I have seen, though, that some of the smaller breeds are more feisty and kind of uh, a little bit more hyper and need more attention. The bigger breeds are more like laid back and, I don't know, they just kind of lay around. So really, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Shane. No? Um, so, I mean, it depends on what you want. I know, like, the little Dutch are super cute, and they're small. That would be good for a, a small kid. If you're thinking about, like, a pet for a kid, um, like, my kid's size that are both under five, a small rabbit would be good because then they can handle it easier. 
wear a bigger rabbit, like Carly can't carry around our adult New Zealands. They're just too heavy because it's 10 pounds. Uh, but we have a little mini Rex. And she can carry that thing around because it's only about four pounds. So if you have smaller children, I would go with a smaller breed, like a little mini Rex or a Dutch or even a little lion head, something like that. Um, just because it's easier for them to manage and them to carry around. Um, I've had people buy some of my New Zealands for pets and they've leash trained them and they take them on a leash. Um, but those are like teenagers, so they could carry the bigger um the bigger rabbits if that makes sense um so i guess it just depends on how big your kids are or if you're getting it for yourself then it really doesn't matter um but i would definitely get one very young like eight eight weeks or as early as you can find one that way it's used to you and it's been handled a lot um because if you get one that's older it may be not used to you and they don't really adjust well so um thanks there's one, is there one that's more friendly or does it depend on how much you handle it? Um, <coughs> I think it has to do with genetics, really. Uh, there are some little breeds that are not very nice. Um, I, but some people, like I say tips. they are. Um, tips. I think it has to do with a little bit of both. If you handle it, they're going to be a lot better than if you don't handle it. Um, but like we had a doe, um, and she was feisty when we got her, and all of her babies were feisty, Mommy. even though we handled them from day one. Mommy, what? I don't know. It's right over there somewhere. Anyways, um, so she was just not nice, and her babies weren't nice, so I think it was genetic. Um, so you would have to work with a breeder that was breeding for pets, and most of the time their, no, their babies are, are more handled and they're that way. I have certain ones that I would never sell. I can't pet. find this okay, right I don't dry know out. I'll find it in a minute. No, it it's will dry under, out. Carly, it's got to be under here somewhere. chill and lay back and I don't even really handle their rabbits as much I mean I check them and do health checks and they are super calm and super laid back just like your mom so I think it has to do a little bit with that uh, I have one doe that I bought just for breeding purposes and I literally haven't handled her very much at all uh, besides like routine maintenance where I handle some of my show ones you know weekly to like just for them to practice for show and the one i haven't ever handled harley is super super chill and all of her babies are chill so i think that's a genetic thing um i don't know now there are some rabbits i mean i think it's in every breed too because like one of my students has a mini rex and he bit her and so yeah i don't know why he bit her, but he bit her and it got her good. And like my mini rex was super chill. We, when we got her, she was an, an adult. They were just getting rid of her, and they were retiring her or whatever. And so she, she's just super laid back and chill. And Carly just carries it around like a baby. And both of her babies are super chill. Um, just like I don't know. So I think it has to do with that. So I would definitely. Talk to different breeders and just try to decide. But yeah, Dutch are really cute. Um, 
and you can get Dutch for pets pretty easily because they're very hard to get the markings right. So for sh like, especially if you have someone that raises for show, they're going to have tons of little Dutch babies that are not marked right. And so they'll sell them as pets. Um, there's tons and tons of mini Rexes, so, so you can find a little mini Rex. <coughs> um, so you could take care of one of those. Um, but yeah, I would get it young. And then I would probably get a buck. Bucks seem to be more relaxed than does. Uh, I don't know why. Now, some bucks can spray. So it just depends uh, on the buck. It's hard to tell if they're going to be one that sprays or not. It's kind of like a cat. Um, but does will go through a phase where they want to breed and they'll get a little bit aggressive, um, about six or seven months old, but they'll go through that phase and then they'll be fine. Um, so as long as you know that and know that the, when the does get to about six months old, they want to be left alone. Uh, a lot of times if you can breed them once and then let them be, they'll be fine. Um, but I would definitely do a buck if you were going to get a pet. And they're going to be cheaper. They're easier to come by because not everybody needs a buck. And I just found that like all my bucks are pretty chill and relaxed. They're they're a lot less grumpy than the does. The does seem to be more grumpy. Um, I don't know why. They just are. <coughs> so I hope that helps. Um, Kelsey, I don't know. But yeah, if you, I don't know where you live, but um, I would just look on Facebook. It's hard to sell on Facebook now, but there's still Facebook groups that you can uh, say, hey, I'm looking for a friend or something like that. Uh, you can also go on the Arbo website and uh, look at breeders on there. You will split, spend a little bit more money. Um, but uh, they might could send you in the direction of someone else. Um, you could always go. I wouldn't go to a flea market or something like that just because you don't know what you're going to get. And it'll probably be an older rabbit. But yeah, I would just try to to look on Facebook. There's still tons of Facebook people. Or MeWe. Uh, MeWe is like where everybody's moving to that is trying to sell rabbits since Facebook is like cracking down on sales of animals. Um, but yeah, I hope that helps. But yeah, I'm in Arkansas, so I don't know where you live. Um, I know lots of breeders around here. Um, if you told me where you lived, I might could even help you find somebody close to you. It just depends on where you live. Um, I know quite a few different breeders. I have had my connections now that I've been in the rabbit business for a while. So Ontario, yeah. Um, so I don't know about. I know there's like a rabbit show up in Ontario coming up. That may be another option is to go uh, see, go to a rabbit show and meet people that way. You can go on the Arba website. Uh, let me see if I can look that up. And you can look up uh, rabbit shows. And then if you went to a show, that would be a great place um, to connect with people. I'll see if I can find that for you really quick. Let's see. But I can find, you can actually look up for Canada the dates. Let's see. I'll search on here. I'll get it. I'll give you just the link that way. You can quickly find it. Excuse me. Okay, so... I don't know exactly um, how close 
these will be with you. But here, I'll just give you the full list, and then you can look through there if you go on this website. That's the Arbor website, and you can search for um, British Columbia, I think. There was a couple of, most of them are United States, but I'm pretty sure the BC is British Columbia. Oh, here's, there's actually Ontario. Let me click on there. So here is the list for just, I don't know if they'll show you. But you can go down on the search for state and click Ontario, and there's one in, um, coming up actually this month, 10, 26. So that's in a couple of weeks. It is in Kamaiko, K-O-M-A-K-O, uh, Ontario. And you might get, it looks like it's on a Saturday. So you may could go on there and see if you can go to that show that weekend and just step in and get to know some other breeders and look at the different rabbits. And then that way you can see what all the different um, types of rabbits there are, get to know them. Um, and that would be super fun. Uh oh, Bubba, don't turn that off. Oh, yeah. Hey, how are you doing, Darcy? It's okay that you're late. Um, it's been a pretty crazy live stream. But yeah, um, but there, if you look on the website, they normally have, have different ones. Um, and you can look up by your area. There's another one in another place in Canada. I don't really know where they're like, look, you could just search, you know, search for different places and see which is close to you. Um, but yeah, that one's on the 29th. If you look it up, or 26, 1026. And you can go and check out the show, talk to some other breeders. They probably will even have rabbits there for sale. If not, um, you go around, a lot of people have business cards. And look at all the different rabbits, see which one you like the best. And maybe get a new pet. So that would be, um, that's a, that's the best, that's where I would go to get a, to get a rabbit. Because you know those are taken care of, you know they're going to be. Uh, good quality and you can even talk to them and say hey I just want for one for a pet um, and then once you find uh, the breed you like you can say hey if you have one that comes up that's not show quality or maybe it had an, like an injury or something maybe it lost a, a toenail and so then it's not show quality you know I would be interested in adopting it as a pet uh, you know that would be an option and then you could get it for a little cheaper than if you got a show quality one mm -hmm. and just get to know a whole bunch of different breeders so that would be my suggestion. Did you get locked out? Hey, Peyton, they're locked out, I guess. Or no, they're not. So, yep. I hope you can find it. Did that link work for you? Hopefully. It should take you right to find a show, and then you just search. Hopefully, it'll work. I guess I could try the link too, I'm not sure. <coughs> yeah. You just scroll down and then it says Arba Shows and then choose a state and, ch and click um, Ontario. And there's also a couple like British Columbia, I don't know how close that is to Ontario. Again, I don't know mine. But it may be worth it to go um, and see. So that's my go to website for finding rabbit shows or finding breeders. You can also look on there. Um, and find breeders. Um, so you could look on there and find breeders in Canada. And so you could always contact them as well. Um, so, like, you can go to. Try and see. The breeders tab, and then you can look through them. So, but you can just look around on that website if you want um, and find your breeder close to you. It's really a nice website and it even tells you like a lot of information on like the recommended cages and cage space for your breeds, um, what you should feed them. There's lots of educational uh, information on that website. Um, 
and they are nationally known, or actually world renowned known, so they're good to, to trust. Um, sometimes you'll get pet breeders that are like, oh, don't put a rabbit on a wired cage, and it'll give them sore hawks, and that's not the case. Um, it is actually the healthiest and most sanitary um, way to raise rabbits. And if you're worried about them needing a place to get off, you can just put a resting board in there or something. But I've noticed that 90% of the time, my rabbits don't get on the resting board. Um, they'll poop on it and make a mess with it, but they'll lay on the wire. Um, if you get good quality cages, it won't hurt them. Um, obviously, if it's a pet and you train it to be inside, you can litter box train them. Um, they're easier than a cat. You just put them in the area you want huh? them to be. Wherever they go to the bathroom, that's where you put their litter box. Uh -huh. And they, won't, um, they always go in the same spot. It fell, it fell on the ground. So they're super easy to litter box train if you're going to just keep them inside. They do like to nibble and chew on things. Yes. Um, so you can really baby proof, baby proof your house. That way they don't chew on things and get hurt. You want to keep them in a little area. You don't want to just let them run free. So you do want to give them a little safety area. But you can get them out and let them run around while you're, you know, you're supervising them and things like that. But I would not just let them run free in your house while they're not supervised because they're little and they can get hurt. They're pretty fragile. Um, so they can't just be, it's not like a dog or a cat. They can't just let, be left alone. They'll eat something or chew on something and ingest it and get impacted. And, and then it'll be bad news. Your paper's on the floor, so. Um, so they do need like a, a cage or an area that's theirs. Even if you um, just left them in there when they're unattended and they got them out when you're there to watch them, that would be perfectly fine. But they like their little area, you know, they don't mind being in a cage. <coughs> um, but you can train them too. Like one of mine that someone bought as a pet, they trained it to come to them and it like jumps up on their their couch. They'll like tap their little leg and it'll hop over and jump up on the couch. I thought that was, and they had that thing maybe a couple of days and taught that. They're very easy to train. Um, I've had people that bought them for me that litter box trained them. Um, I've never personally done it before. <coughs> I had a doe that had to have surgery and we brought her inside and I put a little area for her to go to bathroom and she did that without any problems. She I knew she always goes in the, the back right corner of her cage. So I put her little box in the back corner of her big cage in the house. And she never missed. Um, she did, like, dig and kind of make a mess with the shavings. But, I mean, it wasn't a big deal. She was pretty good. So, any other questions? I've lost my paper. Um, my son was drawing on it. So, I'm trying to think what other people ask me. Oh, here's my paper. Maybe I can. I said grew all over it. Let's see. Oh, it's kind of hard to read. Look, my son drew me a nice little picture. Isn't that cute? Um. Let's see. Baba, no, let me. No. It's fine. Here. Um, so I, don't, I think if anybody else has any questions, you need to ask pretty quick, and I'm going to hop off because I do have some family here, and I've got to figure out what we're going to do this afternoon. I know we're supposed to be going at 11 here, like an hour, maybe to the church to make sure everything's safe for the funeral uh, that we're having for Papa this afternoon. So I think I've... All the questions that people have asked me, I had answered. So if you have a question, just send me a message or write it in the comments somewhere. And I can answer them next week. So you want to say goodbye, everybody? Bye. Say see you next week at the same time. See you next week at the same time.
All right. Bye, guys. It was great spending the hour with you guys.